I'm speaking today with Mr. Luis Alberto Moreno, the president of the Inter-American Development Bank, a bank that will be dispersing about $15 billion in this year alone. Thank you very much for speaking to us, uh, Mr. Moreno. How would we identify the priorities that you've set for yourself um, in terms of uh, what needs to be dispersed this year and um, the priorities for Latin America in general? Well, first of all, let's understand what a development bank is. We're a regional development bank for Latin America, like the Asia Development Bank is for Asia. Um, our role, of course, is basically around development financing. Largely, the bulk of our lending goes to sovereigns, to governments. Uh, and because our unique uh, circumstance where we are, our shareholders, in the case of the IDB, they're 48. Three of them are from Asia, Japan, Korea, and now China. China. Yeah. Um, we enjoy a AAA uh, rating status, status. We basically lend for social programs uh, and for poverty alleviation, and increasingly for infrastructure. And we also do things around small and medium enterprises, which are uh, at the core of uh, uh, employment generation in Latin America. In fact, it is small and medium enterprises that represent close to 60% of total employment in Latin America. Having said that, basically the focus of what we have been doing this year during the crisis is really to step up our lending, to be as countercyclical as possible, because it is development institutions uh, that really have come uh, at a time that was critical as uh, financial markets dried up and it was very difficult that uh, it has been difficult for some countries to get access to financing so that is that gap that we fill not only for sovereign lending but also for non-sovereign lending how would you describe uh, your role vis-a-vis -vis the commercial lending sector in latin america i think that development banks in general have this interesting challenge because the more commercial um, a country becomes, the less it would theoretically have a need for developmental funding. Um, I guess that during the crisis, uh, your role was accentuated somewhat. But how would you describe this juxtaposition with domestic markets uh, in developing countries in Latin America? Well, certainly, if they are commercial banks lending to conventional uh, sovereigns or non-sovereign, uh, there's really should development banks shouldn't be participating but that that as a in, a in a general principle but development needs uh things that truly impact uh, the lives of people that can significantly reduce uh competitiveness gaps or uh, improve the quality of life of people through programs on education programs on uh, social safety nets those are exactly the natural things for a development bank to lend to. Increasingly, the new challenges are things like climate change. Uh, you know, this is one of the areas where all development banks are extremely concentrated for obvious reasons. I mean, there's we feel a gap that uh, doesn't exist in areas of energy efficiency, in areas of uh, adaptation of carbon credits or, or support of green energy, and finally. We, we are basically knowledge institutions. We basically strive to share best practices throughout the So it's not uh, just economy. the capital that you bring yeah, in, but the, also the... The capital is just a piece of something larger. Right. Having said that, um, you're trying to raise, under the ninth recap program, uh, a sum that goes way beyond what the IDB has been uh, uh, you know, running on mm -hmm. all these years. And there's criticism that the $180 billion that you're trying to raise um, uh, is um, uh, somewhat uh, dangerous because um, it, you know, it, it sort of puts you um, in scrutiny in terms of how you're going to be deploying that funds and, 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 and all of that. Well, look, first of all, uh, we are in the midst of the discussion of a capital increase. Uh, that number was a uh, uh, group of uh, experts uh, that individually recommended that number to our shareholders, to our board of governors. Uh, we have done some demand analysis uh, that 
has a low range scenario and a high range scenario it, that would support a, an increase of about a hundred percent and not a hundred and eighty percent right uh, and you know that those are the ranges having said that that needs necessarily to have a negotiation we're in a trajectory uh, to finish this process as has been agreed in the last meeting of our governors uh, by our next annual meeting which will be held in Cancun Mexico in March of next year okay. um, we will know then what will be the final number uh, but what is critical however is to understand that development needs in Latin America are growing, that we are still not entirely out of the woods, that financial institutions are still weak, right. and therefore uh, the need to have strong development banks to be precisely ready to uh, come and support all of development. Those right. development the, the criticism seems to be on IDB's internal capability to manage um, an increase of that magnitude, um, and and also the um, the processes you have in place to measure the results of your current investments and how you know they've been achieving the goals that they set out to do. Um, you know what's being done internally to strengthen the institution to be to well, be relevant. First of all, I do believe that we have the capability uh, to do uh, more lending. In fact, the best example is that historically our you know, average lending was about seven and a half billion. We're doubling it this year. We did it with the exact same amount of staff. So we've demonstrated that we can do it. That does not mean that we can do things better. In fact, we have a whole agenda that of uh, improvements as every institution needs, any financial institution needs to do on, on improving risk management, uh, on management for development results. That's something that we put in place over a year ago, but these things, you know, take time to to really get uh, and, and demonstrate their effectiveness. And we will continue to do all of these things and they're fundamental for any institution, that level of change and of really having a better bank. And the countries that you're lending into in, in Latin America, the national balance sheet of the countries that you're lending to, um, how's that progressing? Um, what are you seeing um, taking place in terms of external borrowings and uh, and uh, the stability of the currencies uh, of the respective countries that that are your 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 borrowers in that sense. Well, look, I, I Latin America is in a very unique and different position than it was in the past. Think for a minute uh, that for the many financial crises that occurred, many actually did originate in Latin America. This one did not originate in Latin America, much the contrary. Perhaps one could argue that many Latin American countries were the last ones to fear it, to, to get the impact and the effects of the financial crisis, and they were probably the first ones to get out and, and start to, to rebound. So that's new. And that's new partly because countries were uh, with larger domestic markets, with uh, better fiscal balances, and uh, on the whole with fiscal balances, with debt to GDP ratios that are significantly lower than they were in the past, about 25%. Right.